Hey everybody, what's going on? Just back with another video. So uh, Tulsi Gabbard's uh, been back at it, uh, really just roasting Kamala Harris. And it's great to see because, you know, if you remember that debate she had, which I made a video of a while ago, I mean, she just absolutely destroyed Kamala Harris. And I think she's about to do it again. So here she is. She's just on Fox doing an interview and uh, we'll have a look it's just a few minutes long and then we'll talk about it after like usual. I just want to play this clip of you on stage with Kamala Harris from, I guess it's four or five years ago now, and uh, ask you a very specific question about this exchange. Well, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. I am proud of that work, and I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. So that was quite the moment, July of 2019. You, you gave an interview to the AP saying all you had to do was Google that interview. Yeah. And that you were surprised that her comeback was not more effective. What do you mean by that? Well, she really didn't have a comeback. I think she revealed in that debate uh, the same thing that I think her campaign handlers are worried about right now is, you know, Kamala Harris is an empty suit. Uh, they are trying to create this new version of Kamala Harris to to match what their pollsters are telling them so she can say whatever she needs to say to try to win over voters which is the most offensive thing, I think, because they think we're so stupid as to forget what her record actually is. And so, you know, in 2019, very simply, I confronted her with her hypocrisy, how what she said was very different than what she actually did. Uh, and she had no answer for it. She had no explanation. She didn't even try to, to own or, or justify what her actions were. And that's going to be the key thing here for voters uh, as we head into this election is, you know, Kamala Harris will say whatever she thinks she needs to say. We have to pay attention to her actions because on every single major issue, you will see that same kind of hypocrisy that I pointed out in 2019, where she'll say one thing, but her record tells a very, very different story. Well, she's got three and a half weeks to straighten it out because that's when the debate is on September 10th. Here's another issue that you're talking about, your Axios. When she was running for president in 2019, she was for decriminalizing illegal border crossings. No more. She has backed off. And that's just one of the issues now, okay? And here is Harris in her own words on border policies. I am not in favor of decriminalizing um, or, or not having um, consequence for We have to keep, let me just be very clear. We have to have a secure border. But I am in favor of saying that we're not going to treat people who are undocumented across the borders criminal. We've got to critically re-examine ICE and its role and the way that it is being administered and the work it is doing. And we need to probably think about starting from scratch. I want to know, when you become president, would you be committing to close de immigration detention centers? Absolutely, on day one. On day one. You need to do a 180 on all of this now, Tulsi. And the, the only... I mean, talk about the hypocrisy. I mean, Jesus Christ. We're going to close the border on day one. Hey, why don't you get your stupid president to do it right now? Aren't, aren't you the vice president? Don't you have some say? Apparently not. The way you can effectively do it is if you have the media in your back pocket. Which she does. She has the mainstream propaganda media helping her, collaborating with her. Frankly, they should be reported for these in-kind contributions they are making to her campaign because they are doing her work for her. They're trying to claim that she was not the border czar after all, even though there are many, many clips of them saying, well, she was in fact the border czar. I think, you know, so many of those clips she may try to say, oh, well, that was back then, that was back in 2019. The problem that she has to reckon with is the fact that her actions, her positions, uh, and, and lack of action and failures, for that matter, as vice president, match very directly with what she was saying in 2019. Uh, she really does believe in open borders. They really do believe in allowing millions of illegal immigrants to come across our borders, flood our communities, uh, they really do believe in making sure that they have 10 million, over 10 million new uh, future voters. So, again, actions will speak louder than words. Kamala Harris is fake. 
She's a consummate politician. We've got to pay attention to her her record as vice president. We will watch. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was very well put. And uh, if you guys, you know, don't remember that that debate in two thousand nineteen. I mean, Tulsi Gabbard just absolutely destroyed Kamala Harris, and right, and you saw a little bit of it there. But it, there's like a, a longer five minute clip of that, you know, where it just it was just a bunch of word salad and a bunch of hypocrisy. I'm surprised Kamala didn't start cackling halfway through it. I mean, to say that she's stupid is essentially a nice way to put it, right? And there's way worse words you can use, and they're probably more accurate. But she is just a complete dumbass. I mean. And to think that she's going to be the the next president of the United States, which she will be, and I'm not happy about this, right? If you've watched this channel, we all know who I want to be a president. It's not Harris and it's not Trump. It's that other guy, that, that, that Kennedy guy. Yeah, the guy they're trying to smear all the time. I want him to be president, but it's going to be Harris. And you're going to have open borders. Her record as prosecutor is, is going to... She's going to do very similar things. She's going to be putting a lot of people in jail. And then she's going to keep them there for even longer than their sentences warrant, just so that the state or the country can get free labor. At least that's what she did when she was a prosecutor of California. Has she learned her lesson from that? Or is that what she wanted to do? Because it was good for the state. And you know, politicians, if you're a politician of a state, the state becomes before people. The party becomes before the country. That's what politicians have, have become these days. It's been going on for quite a while. I'd probably say since the 60s. But I mean, her record, the hypocrisy, all this you know, cultish, weird behavior from both parties, right? You see it from the Republicans too. But I mean, this is why Tulsi left the Democratic Party because she, she was, she was a, a congresswoman for Hawaii. She saw all this corruption, all this weird like high school clicks like oh you have to vote with us or else you're not a part of our group anymore and it's just a bunch of high school bullshit that's what politics have become these days it's the same thing here in canada i mean i don't know it's just open borders which is what i mean what you're seeing right now is basically what's just going to continue with harris as president except it's going to be even worse and every time you call her out on it you're racist you're sexist you're a bigot Whatever they can come up with, you're a conspiracy theorist, which is now basically when someone calls you a conspiracy theorist nowadays, it's just a fancy word for saying, hey, you're right. And if people don't like that, well, maybe you shouldn't have been so indoctrinated during the pandemic. But either way, for all those people who are hoping that Robert Kennedy is going to be the president or Trump is going to be the president, we're all going to be very disappointed. I wish I could have more optimism and come out and say, yeah, I think we really have a shot. I hope that happens. But in reality, when I picture the, you know, the election on November 5th, I just don't see any other outcome other than the Democrats winning. But hey, what do you guys think? Let me know. Do you think that I'm right? Do you think that it's going to be Harris or do you think that Trump or Kennedy will get in? Very curious to actually read your comments on that because I have a feeling a lot of you are going to disagree with me and that's totally fine. I'm just uh, really curious to hear, to, uh, hear your opinion on what you guys think of what will happen on November 5th. I don't mean to discourage any Kennedy fans. Please go out and vote. Do your part. I'm just saying the, the indoctrination from the left is so strong. Not to mention if, if all these you know new Americans who are coming in, if they're allowed to vote, which I don't even know if that's going to happen or not. They're saying it's not, but who knows? If they're allowed to vote, it's over. So, I mean, we'll see, right? So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I always appreciate that. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow this channel. Uh, thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I'll be back shortly with another